Hi right, guys, welcome back to Hooksite Fishing. I'm back here right now, and I'm going to go over my tackle box, and what exactly I do with my tackle, and my storage, and so on. So, again, I'd like to welcome y'all back to the channel, and let's dive right into the sweet content here. Okay, first off, I'm in the kayak fishing anymore, just because it's what I got into. It's easier, you know what I mean, it's off the bank. So, I have a milk crate with a Plano Soft Tackle 3600 pretty sure it's called soft cider um this is actually a basically a milk crate plan i was made that goes inside of my current milk crate and let's talk about my milk crate along with this um just your you know your standard milk crate it's green little camo you know something to match my boat because my boat is olive green so let's go to the side of my crate here just looks like a normal crate right well right here i have my fillet knife it's a bubble blade, pretty sure it's seven and a half inch, got a little bit of flex in the blade. Thing is absolutely razor sharp. I love this knife. I use this to cut up my cut bait and so on. I got a piece of paracord tied to here along with a carabiner with a stretchy cord tied to a pad eye. This way, I don't have to worry about dropping my knife in the water. That's the last thing I want. I'll be sitting there cutting up a bait and, oh crap, I dropped a $50 knife in the water. You know, I'm kind of screwed. And I have the zip, and I actually have my sheath zip tied into the side of my crate. This way, all I got to do is look behind me and blam. There you go. I got my knife. I'm good to go and cut up my bait now. Okay. So let's continue to what's attached on these other carabiners that are here, as you all can see. Let's see what I drag out. Okay. This is my lockjaw. If I'm sitting there handling a 40-pound flathead, and I'm on a, I'll be honest with you, I'm on a $100 kayak. I'm on a little tiny kayak. Not nothing too big, right? Last thing I want to do is put my hand in the thing's mouth. I'm not going to say I haven't. I've easily put my hand in a fish's mouth before. It's not a big deal. But my thing is, if I'm sitting there and I'm about to go overboard because this fish has managed to grab a hold of my hand, you know, I don't want to talk about catfish and everybody grab your hand and they clamp on. They don't let go. They, they just don't. And then they also do their little death roll. So this is my Whisker Seeker. It's a great product. I love it. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But basically what I'm going to do when that fish goes and it's getting really close to the boat, I'll open up these. And I'll wait for him, and I'll go, and I'll clamp it onto his jaw, and I'll pull him up into the boat. This way, if something does happen, these will just go right in the water. Granted, I do have them clamped down, but if I need to, that string is going to give. This is only for 15 pounds, so this will break before something happens. So, I got these. But the good thing is about this little thing right here, if I drop this in the water, I can still easily retrieve it. It's going to work out just fine. So, let's see what else I got attached. Unless that's the same thing I just pulled out. It is not the same thing I just pulled out. Okay, right here. As soon as I get it untangled. Okay. This is my Whisker Seeker scale. It's a good little catfish scale. I love it. I don't have an issue with it. it has two little bars come out. This way I can hold it up like this and weigh my fish. You need one of these. You need a scale. I don't care what type of fishing you're doing. Let's say you catch your personal best fish you've ever caught in your life. And you know what? You don't got a scale. So you can't weigh your fish now, can you? So, I recommend getting a scale like this. This is meant for big fish. Granted, though, the biggest blue cat I ever caught was 181 pounds. At that point, if you get a fish that big, bring it back. Go put it on deer scale or something like that, because you're probably going to mount it. But, granted, though, it's still good to have a scale with you. What happens if you're doing a tournament and you need to go and check your fish? This is the way to do it. Not only that with this thing, it's quick, it's easy, it turns on, blammo, there you go. And let's say I start putting on port, start putting on pounds. Oh, look, there you go. And that's it. You know, it's quick and easy. This was the turn off. And if you're in the UK, this will also do kilograms and all the good stuff like that. And also have that tethered too. Okay, let's go to the back. I have three rod holders. Nothing special, you know, just three little rod holders just to hold up some more rods. This is a hook remover. I'll be honest with you, this is probably one of the most useful tools I've ever used in my life. With a catfish, their jaws are extremely hard. It is like hitting a brick wall. You can't go and pull out the hook unless you're using a pair of pliers, but even then, it's still really hard sometimes. These things right here, grab onto the hook, and all you do is twist it, and there you go. Your hook's out. Absolutely love those things. Now let's go on to my other thing that I got in here. You cannot buy these in stores. I mean, you can, but you can't. Um, I work in a surgery department. So, I can get free surgical tools if I need to. These are damaged. They got a little bit of pitting right here, so they can't be used anymore. Um, these things were absolutely great. 
for getting bait out of, or getting bait, <laughs> getting your hook out of your bait's mouth, like a bluegill. I mainly use a lot of bluegill and the goldfish and other types of other types of stuff. Mainly bluegill. I like to use sunfish. Um, these work great for doing that. All you gotta do is just grab them by the hook and just, and they come right off. No problem. As you see, obviously, tell you down. You know, you know the whole spiel. The next thing I'm gonna go over is you don't have to have it, but I have it because I don't want to damage my kayak. I have a cutting board. Little 88 cent cutting board from Walmart works great. Um, I use this to cut up my bait. This way, I don't go and put a bunch of cut marks in my kayak. I don't want to do that. Granted, my kayak's only 100 bucks, and I'm probably gonna beat the crap out of it. But if I can keep it nice while I can, I'm going to. And only that, this thing actually comes in handy when I'm trying to cut up my bait. A whole idea, all I gotta do is put it on my lap and cut it up. And there you go. So now on to the meat. Now on to the big meat and taters of our tackle box and i'm so sorry about the camera mount i'm using a car camera mount on top of a tackle box and it's actually working out really well so let's get into the meat and taters here let's show you what's in my first compartment here by the way this thing did have two sides you could take it off you could take the top off you can do whatever you want to do so let's get into the meat and taters and here i have my slip bobbers i have bobbers like this which is a this is a mudville 12 inch balsa wood float I love this bobber. It works great for cats. I've caught several catfish on it. I got some of these, which is the high low or high high tech bobbers. I think it's what they're called. I'm pretty sure. Um, again, 12 inch slip floats. I mainly use 12s. Um, this one has yellow tint just because of the piece of paper or a little piece of plastic I got in it. Now these are weighted. Most of the bobbers are usually weighted. This way, all I got to do is toss them out there. I don't even have to tie them away, and they just automatically go bloop. And they automatically set themselves down. Okay, the other the other couple I got in here. I got an eight eight inch weighted. Uh, you get this one at Walmart. It's okay. I haven't really had any issues with it. I still like my twelve inches. These are my channel cat bobbers. This one's weighted. Well, they're supposed to, both supposed to be weighted, but I still put a little bit of weight on them. I say I use them for channels. I really don't ever use these for channels, but they'll work just fine if you just want to go and toss one out there really quick. If you don't have the room to go and put the big twelve inches in there, they work out just fine. I have some more bobbers, but they're not in my bag because they're too long. They are pencil bobbers or stick bobbers, you want to call them. Super, super, super thin bobbers. I watch you grab those really quick because they're just right behind me, and I'll show you all what I'm talking about. The bobbers like these, these stick bobbers, pencil bobbers. These are highly sensitive. It's basically going to allow that fish to easily pull it a lot easier. I say a lot easier, but it's basically going to be able to detect a lot more because it's not as big and bulky so it doesn't have as much to pull down uh i think you get these for a couple bucks at bass pro these are 12 inches these are catfish floats i've used them once or twice but they're almost too big to be put in here and they're actually kind of hard to see sometimes so i normally don't use these but i have them just in case i decide to use them now to get into the other good stuff now to get into the front compartment okay this is mainly enough for tackle box up front but i have all my tackle inside the crate just because I can. It makes it easier to get access to it. Okay. Here we go. I got leader line. This is 60 pound test, if you could see that. Um, nothing special, you know. Um, this is some 15 pound braid, which I am out of, and I don't know why I put it back. <laughs> this is their easy braid. Um, it's okay. It's four pound diameter. I don't know why I even put it back in here if it's out. Um, this is on my bass poles, it's on my bluegill pole, just in case something big ends up getting a hold of it, you know, nothing special. Um, I got some Trilene 60 pound monofilament leader. I say leader, it's actual line, but I use it for leader and it works out just fine, just in case I run out of my other stuff. I got some Trilene 14 pound monofilament, I'll use this for leader, um, occasionally. If maybe the hooks I'm using are too small and I can't exactly go and fit my big leaders into it, I'll use this. That seems to be all I have in terms of my lines. Um, I will be getting some more lines soon, and I will definitely go and keep you all up to speed with that. Just because I don't have the cash to go get my line right now. Because whenever I buy a line, normally I'm spending about 30 bucks a spool. Because I use spider wire um, uh, braid, and that stuff ain't cheap. So, let's get into my actual tackle boxes. And I will also go over different tackle storage, because I actually have quite a few tackle boxes behind me and I'll flip y'all around to where y'all can see it so let's get into the actual tackle storage here I got panfish tackle 
this is my panfish box. Everything I use for panfish. It also includes maybe um, bass creek fishing stuff, I guess is what you call it. For like crawl ads and stuff like that, which is right there. So, let's go and open up this bad boy right here. And I'll show y'all what my panfish box is all about. Okay. So, right here, we've got some assorted Aberdeen's straight shanks. Something special. Got some split shots. Um, I got everything ranging from super tiny all the way up to, I think, this is like quarter ounce or something. Or eighth ounce. You got tiny little bluegill hooks right there. I'm not going to bring them out because it's a pain in the ass. We got a little crankbait. Nothing special. Just a little crankbait. You know, something for crappie maybe. I got different jig heads here. I got spinning jig heads. I got small jig heads. I got all types of different kinds of jig heads for crappie. Um, I haven't ever caught a crappie. I'm trying to catch a crappie. Um, I have... I'm the only one in my family that's ever tried it. See, I got a sword of sizes. I got a sure this is an eighth of an ounce. This is like quarter. These are both quarters. One's with the spinner. And y'all probably want or two have all your jig heads together. Well, my thing is, I'm trying to go and save space here. I don't got a whole lot of space. I'm on a kayak. So, I got beetle spins. Beetle spin things. And I always keep my things off just in case I decide to go and put something different. Like a little um, hair jig or something like that. Let's talk about hair jigs. Here's a hair jig right now. Um, I got a couple of rooster tails and a couple of top spinners. Those are cricket fly. I don't know why on earth I have fly livers. Um, just different stuff. You know, I figured I might be able to go and put them on a sinker, see how that works. I got some swivels and stuff like that. Some little panfish crap. Um, I got panfish assorted worms. So you got white and green. I forgot what the color that was. I remember this one right here is thunder chicken because I think it's kind of funny. Looks like a little thunder chicken. I don't know what screams thunder chicken about pink and pink and chartreuse, but I mean it's whatever. I never think thunder chicken. I always think of a turkey, but um, you got their shad poles. Um, I've used these before, haven't ever caught anything on them because I've decided to fish in the middle of winter. But these things with a jig head on them look absolutely amazing in the water. You got jokers. I don't know why they call them jokers. They're just called jokers. Um, I remember this color. I somehow managed to remember all normal colors. Um, I don't exactly know what brand this is. This one is a John Deere green color. And I got the uh, yellow and white. These two I can't remember the name of, but or not the brand. I can't remember the brand. All these right here are by Mr. Crappy. Obviously, you got some bobbers of assorted things. You got some some slip bobbers. I think that's a slip bobber. Correct, it is a slip bobber. Then you also got your normal bobber part up here. This way, if you decide to slip it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. As y'all can see, a little divot right there. There it is. Nothing special. I can also go and put a little glow stick in that. So. Let's get into the, the bass stuff. Even though I told we don't bat, bass fish, I normally catfish. Okay. First thing y'all can see is my, my assorted whopper ploppers. Okay. Nothing really special in this box. Really just bass stuff. Bass hard lures. I prefer hard lures over soft plastics. But even though I have soft plastics. You got all crankbaits here. I got crank. I'm not going to drag them all out because the hooks are tangled. I love using this little square bill right here. This chartreuse one. I got a little crawdad. Crazy bug right here. Um, Got me a little frog. This is this is my cranks. I got top water right here. So you got a little soft booyah pad crasher. Swamp Frog. That's the color of him. Haven't got to use him yet. It's pretty cool. Picked him up while I was on sale. Got me a Jitterbug in the frog color. I love using spooks. Um, I just recently started using spooks. But from what I've been using them, um, I was literally so dumb in bass fishing. I didn't even know how to walk the dog, which is bad. <laughs> um, I know I walk the dog now. I'm more educated. And I absolutely love using spooks. I love doing the action of the the bringing back on the reel at the same time. I think it's so cool. But now one of my favorite type of lures I love to use. I know what y'all are going to say. The hype train has already left. Yes, yes it has. And I'm sorry that this video is going to be long, but I got a lot of tackle. So we're going to go wrong with tackle. I got a bluegill 110. This is the new improved version. As you can tell by the... the as soon as the camera will focus, which I don't really think it's really wanting to today... It does not want to focus. Okay, but as y'all can see, it has this little cone shape right here. It doesn't allow anything in there, which is absolutely awesome. So basically, 
if you all don't already know, you're going to release across the water and they're going to go like this. They're just going to whopper plop. That's what these are. These are whopper ploppers. They're just going to make this loud plopping sound as they crow across the water. The 110 is normally your standard size for decent bass. Even a small bass will take it. Um, this is a 110. Um, by the way, with these whopper ploppers, I will say one thing about them. They are expensive. The smallest ones are $12 a piece. Or $13. $12.99, so $13. That 110 is $16.99. This one right here is $16.99. This is a 130 The biggest one they offer is a 190 and it is, I'm pretty sure, about that long. I want to say this is probably about a good 6 inches. If it's hooked into my hand, that hurt. It's probably a good 6 inches. This one was 16 bucks. So remember, if you're going to go and toss these out, if you're on the bank, be sure you can go swim out and go get them. Because these things ain't cheap. And that's the last thing you want to do is lose a $16 lure. Um, that's a good thing about being on a kayak. I can go retrieve my lures. And these float. So you can get them. This is the Sooner color. That's the bluegill color. This is a 130. On to my 90s. Um, this is a bone color 90. This is not the new improved version. As you go tell by the tail... It does not have the little thing. Nothing special, just a little whopper plopper. You know, you get the thing. And right here, this is the Abad Abaddon Shad. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, I have a lot of bait fish where I live and a lot of the lakes. So I figured my best bet, you shad. Use something that looks natural. Use something that's going to match the hatch. That's another thing I look really, I really look into whenever I fish. Match the hatch. Or, or there's two exceptions. Use white and red, or just white, and use chartreuse. I don't know why they manage to load those colors. It just works. See how some other ones, this manages the crawdad and so on, this frog, you know. White, the bone, goes along with my white category, in my opinion, so I use that. Let's get on my crank, or my buzz baits. Nothing special, you know, just little buzz baits. You know, nothing special. And I just fucking dropped it. Excuse my dirty, dirty language. Um, that's something that will be on the channel occasionally. Um, if this channel takes off, I will bleep it and so on, but, you know, just a little, um, it's called the Terminator, apparently, because I don't even know what this bait was even called. My dad gave it to me a long time ago, and I've caught a couple fish on it. It's been cool. I liked it. My, my buzz baits, and I got my spinners. I normally don't use spinners. I like to use buzz baits. I like to use top water stuff, because I can actually see it, I can feel it, and I can actually see him hit it. This is a soft plastic. This is my Plano soft plastic thing. So let's get into this. Okay. First off, you got some bolt sinkers. I can't manage to grab it because I'm dumb. But you got your little bolt sinker, nothing special, you know. I got assorted ounces. I don't know all my ounces. You got some worm hooks, obviously. With that little bend. Got some bait hooks, which um, I might occasionally use for like a, a wacky rig. You got some Z-Man finesse jig heads, mushroom jig heads. Because the first thing you see off the top is Z-Man. These are the turd crawls. I call them turd crawls because TRD, turd crawl, so it works. This is in green pumpkin, nothing special, just a little crawfish, creature bait. Turd snakes, <laughs> or the finesse turds. These are really good for Ned rigs. I got some Senkos. Now these are dingers in Mardi Gras. And I got some some truce U tails, power worms, you want to call them. Y'all can go ahead and roast me in the comments. I am not very good with my bass tackle at all to save my life. So, y'all can roast me if you want. Okay. You got some hollow crawls in the orange and black color. You got some silver senkos called tin foil. You got motor oil, chartreuse U tail worms. You got some swimming dangers. And I can't read it upside down. It's sparkly white. You got some white trick worms. Nothing special. And you got my little Bass Pro Shop. I don't know what to call this. I'm going to call it a Senko Rigger. Because they're not even Senko. How about this? Just a, a rubber band rigger thing. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it in this video. Okay, so we're going to get the, the thingy. And we're going to go and put the worm in here. And we're going to go bleh. With the rubber band. So, there's that. Cool, right? I know Scott is a avid bass fisherman, even though I've only caught like probably less than 100 on my hand. Okay, now time to my meat and taters. 
This is my catfish box. I told you all before, I mainly catfish. As y'all can tell, catfish. So, we're going to get into my box here. This is a Plano 3600 two-tier. Um, as y'all can see, ew, he uses store-bought stuff. I normally don't. I just have it just in case. I like to keep all my stuff in one box. So, first off, pretty sure these are one on Jackhammers by Team Catfish. Team Catfish makes some pretty decent hooks. Um, they don't stay as sharp as I would have liked. I mean, granted, they still... See, they grab the nail, no problem. Um, they work. I've caught my biggest fish on one. Um, and I'll actually show you all the size here in a minute. This is a 4 rot. I caught my personal best channel on this type of hook right here. He was 6 pounds and um, 2.4 ounces. This is what I caught my personal best flathead on. He was 45 pounds. Uh, this is a 6 out jackhammer. Now, these are my favorite hooks. I love to use these. I don't know why. I just like them. They work out great. These are Gamagatsu Big River Bait Hooks. Or, in Team Catfish, they're also called the Super J Hooks. The difference between the Gamagatsus and the Team Catfish is that they have that little bit of an onset right there. If you all can see that. How the shank and the point is bent. Not the shank. I'm going brain dead right now. The curved part's bent. I'm sorry. I'm probably butchering that terminology and I'm so sorry. And we have got to get through this video because my phone is about dead. So, obviously we got more big river baits. And then we got the hooks I mainly like to use. I use Gamagatsu's big river bait hooks, 9 knots. This is my main hook I use. We got some channel cat stuff, sponges, and so on. These are octopus circles of assorted sizes. As you all can tell from the bent eyelet. And we got straight circles. Now time to get on to the bottom of the box. My mate and taters. As I said before, okay, here we go. My meat and taters. I got some peg floats. I got some whisker seeker lures right here. Um, I got lights for my bobbers. I got some, these are basically all bite indicators. These are like rigging. I got some steel leaders. I don't recommend using steel leader, but I occasionally do from time to time. Just depends on the situation. Got some string bobber stops. I got rattles. I know this rattle right here, it looks bare bones nasty, and it's only because water dried up in it, so it looks kind of nasty. Bobber stops. I got some sinker slides right here. Swivels, assorted swivels, barrels. I got triples and so on. Right here is all my hanging sinkers. And by that I mean clip ons and bank type sinkers that clip onto a sinker slide. Got beads. Obviously, everybody cat fisherman needs beads. And I got my line sinkers. These are the ones I go and actually put through my line. Three ounce flat no rolls and so on. Oh, if it didn't. Oh, it closed on me. It didn't want to, but it did. And then I have a thing here with assorted rigs, a Ziploc baggie with other small bags on the same. My hooks and stuff don't get tangled up, and y'all can already see all my different rigs. Um, I got a pair of needle nose pliers in here just because I used to cut up my monofilament, and I can't seem to grab them coming out. I cut my monofilament leader with this wire cutter right here, so I just do that. Clip my line. And there you go. Nothing special about it, just a little tackle crate. We'll go over different tackle boxes. Um, actually, no, I can probably cover it really quick. I'm almost going to grab my box. This is probably the box I take if I'm going to be bank fishing. This is the 3600. It's going to easily fix, fit two of my bass boxes, my panfish, and my catfish box. There you go. If I'm going to be going bass fishing, I'm probably not going to be catfishing. So I'll use this box right here. And it's it's a strap. Definitely always have a strap on your tackle bag. I will freaking drill that into everybody's brain. Because if you're going to be sitting there bank fishing... You're going to be carrying your stuff for a while. And that crap sucks. Which is why I got a kayak. This way I can also go and cover my ground too. So I am going to go and get off of this video. I've got to get some rest. I'm tired. And I'm I'm just a... I don't know. I'm just a mess. Um, remember, comment, like, subscribe. Ask me any questions you all have. And keep your hooks set aggressive.